It's Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night transcribed feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. By Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you what every smoker wants. Mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. And now, here we go, friends, to Duffy's Tavern with Bert Gordon as the Mad Russian, Hazel Sherman as Miss Duffy, our guest, Phil Baker, and starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. <laughs> Oh, Duffy's Tavern, where the elite meet Dean Archie, the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. Uh, tonight, Phil Baker from the $64 question. You know, take it or leave it. Yeah, that's where you stand up in front of everybody and, and ask your questions. Sort of a night court with prizes. <laughs> well, anyway, Duffy, you ought to see what I got on the menu. In honor of Phil Baker, uh, special take it or leave it dinner. Well, uh, so far, one guy took it and he left it. But it'll be nice to see Phil again, though. He's an old friend of mine. Huh? An old friend of yours coming down tonight, too? An accountant to check the books, huh? An accountant? What a watch, yeah, Duffy. My conscience is clean. So is the cash register. Duffy, please. Look, Duffy, this is a fine accusation. After all the years I've worked for you, I'm surprised. And in fact, I'm hurt. That's all our many years of association means to you. I'm sorry. Holy God, he's wise to me. <laughs> mm, what am I going to do? Oh, 10 to 20 years. What am I worrying about? Your old man is just trying to scam me. That well, why don't you show him the books and scare him back? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with them books. The books is perfect. Good evening. I am Elmer Waterprice, CPA. Oh. The satisfied public accountant, huh? <laughs> you are Archie, I take it. He's Archie, and he took it. <laughs> Look, I uh, will make yourself to home, Mr. Waterprice. Uh, here, let me take your hat and briefcase. Just a minute. All I want to do is look at the books. Hey. <laughs> I said I want you to show me the books. Can't hear a word you're saying, stranger. That's funny. I can hear them perfectly. <laughs> okay, then you show them the books. <laughs> Young man. Young man, stop that stalling. Now, where are the books? Alma, come here. You're a family man, ain't you? Yes. You got a wife and kitties that love you dearly? Why, yes, I have. Elma, it so happens that I'm soon going to be loaded with dough. You see, I got a picture called The Man With My Face. <laughs> and United Artists themselves is releasing it, and naturally, we're figuring on making a lot of money, see? Uh, yes, yes. Go on. So I thought, uh... <clears throat> I think I got him winging. <laughs> I thought maybe if I gave you and the family a couple of passes to the picture. Young man, do you know that bribing is a penal offense? Okay, then penal me. <laughs> the books is over there in the counter. <clears throat> what a phony accountant there. Gee, Archie, do you think you'll find out the books don't balance? How can he miss? Things are either balanced or they're unbalanced. How do you do? <laughs> Russian. Yes? What are you doing here so early? I am inviting you to dinner at my home so you could meet my mother. Sorry, I'll have to meet her some other time. You see, um, my mommy waits to jail. Oh, in that case, you can meet my father. <laughs> You mean to tell me that 
That your father's in jail? Yes, they locked him up for something he didn't do. Well, uh... What didn't he do? Wipe his fingerprints off the safe. (laughs) (laughs) Russian, that that family of yours kind of gets around, don't they? Oh, yes. Especially my brother. Every spring he goes up the river. Goes up the river, uh... To jail? No, up the river. He's part salmon. <laughs> this is ridiculous. How could your brother be part salmon? Mother was a pin. <laughs> but you should see my sister. Your sister, huh? What's wrong with her? Absolutely nothing. She's a perfectly normal halibut. <laughs> Russian. <laughs> Russian, did you ever have your head examined? Yes, but they didn't find anything. <laughs> this I can understand. Now, where am I going to dig up some money now? Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, Phil. Phil, thank you. Oh. Huh? What? You're on your way down, but you got lost? Well, what part of town are you in? Yeah, strolling down Park Avenue, enjoying the smell of the spring in the air. Well, um, it's not walking east till the smell turns to pastrami. <laughs> okay, see you in a little while, Phil. Uh, say, Hachi, hmm? who is this Bill Faker? <laughs> Russian. It's Phil Baker from Take It or Leave It, the guy that gives away the $64 every week. Hey, wait a minute. You're open. That's the way I can get the dough to cover the shortage on the books. Archie, you mean you're going to win as a contestant? Why not, Miss Duffy? I have a reasonable modicum of intelligence. Got common sense, a good memory. I think fast on my feet. Yeah, but you don't know anything. <laughs> oh, yeah? I can answer any question anybody around here can ask. I say, young man. Oh, it's the accounting. <laughs> yes, sir? I have a question for you. Why are all the figures in this column erased? Hmm. <laughs> well, uh, you see, Elmer, uh, the trouble is with the figures, uh... You now have Sing Sing. Would you like to try for Alcatraz? <laughs> Now, here's a word from RCA Victor. Last week, the curtain went up on the 75th anniversary of the National Baseball League and the 50th anniversary of the American League. And there's no better way to celebrate than by enjoying at first hand the thrills and the clean sportsmanship that have made baseball today the American way. Of course, next best thing to a seat in the stands is a seat in front of 19-inch RCA Victor television. Those big 19-inch pictures are clear, Steady, bright. RCA Victor's new extra-powerful picture pickup gives you the best possible reception everywhere. And RCA Victor quality, so apparent in every feature and detail, is safeguarded when you buy the RCA Victor factory service contract for expert installation and maintenance. Next chance you get, take your pick of 19-inch television models now on display at your RCA Victor dealers. It's million-proof television, quality proven in over two million homes. Boy, this encyclopedia is full of valuable information. Abelard, Aberdeen, Abyssinia, Afghanistan. Hmm, let's stop it. Just listen to this. The average wind velocity in Afghanistan is 9.7 miles per hour. Hmm. And the prevailing wind direction is from east to west. Valuable information. What for? Well, if I should happen to be in Afghanistan on a windy day and uh, dames walk by in them loose sarongs, I'd know which corner to stand on. Well, as I've always said, there's nothing like an education. Thank you. And what you have is nothing like an education. (laughs) Oh, yeah, wise guy. Here, take the encyclopedia. Go ahead, ask me some questions. Okay. Oh, here's one you ought to know. 
What hit Sir Isaac Newton on the head? Mrs. Isaac Newton? You now have zero. Would you like to try for minus one? Don't be so funny. I'll, uh, I'll answer the next one twice to bring up the average. Now, go ahead. All right. What is the formula for hydrogen? That's simple. Half hydro and half gin. <laughs> Go ahead, honey. Hit me with another. Okay, answer this one. What is the population of Madagascar? What year? 1912. What month? February. Hmm. The population of Madagascar for February 1912 is 2,756,824. Holy cat, that's terrific. How'd you know? I don't. I'm bluffing, too. Why, it's Bill Baker! <laughs> well, Mr. $64 question himself. Bill, it's a pleasure to welcome to the tavern the, the star of Take It or Leave It. Thanks. And now that I'm here, I'd like to leave it. <laughs> Tell me, why? Because I can't take it. <laughs> For goodness sake, Archie, why don't you open that window? I can't open a window. Face it, the fish market. Oh, I'm sorry. Your apologies accepted. <laughs> I guess the fish market would object to the smell from here. <laughs> For two cents, I'd squeeze this guy's head together till you couldn't tell it from his accordion. <laughs> By the way, Phil, uh, you didn't happen to bring that... Uh, the thing, you know, the accordion with you, by any chance. Oh, yes, I have it right here. I'll play just as soon as we're through talking. Phil, let's keep talking. <laughs> Tell me, uh, how's things going since you're back on your, uh, your quiz shows? A little better, Arch. You know, you must be a very brilliant person to run a program like that. Well, one does have to know a few questions and answers. Mm-hmm. Where do you get the questions? I hold them in my left hand. And the answers? I hold them in my right hand. Then, as I understand it, your brilliance consists of rolling your eyes from left to right. <laughs> well, occasionally I had live a bit. I blink. <laughs> How daring of you, Phil. Well, if it isn't Phil Baker. Archie, what is this? <laughs> what is this? Uh, hmm. No coaching from the audience, please. <laughs> Bill, I'd like you to meet Miss Duffy. Uh, the question to a maiden's prayer. <laughs> How do you do, Miss Duffy? I'm uh, very happy to know you. Dollar four five zero nine eight. I beg your pardon. Oh, well, you're always asking questions. I thought I'd give you the answer first. <laughs> now, by the way, Mister Baker, I have a T L for you. Really? What's the T L? My girlfriend, Tessie Lopchick. <laughs> She thinks you're the funniest and cleverest comedian on the air. Well, oh, thank you, Miss for me. Believe me, that's quite a compliment from a girl who can't even understand English. <laughs> <laughs> and now that we've met Mr. Baker, I have a rather personal question I'd like to ask you. Yes? When you take out a girl and you bring your accordion along, which one do you squeeze first? <laughs> wow. That depends on which one has the better bill. In your case, Miss Duffy, the accordion. <laughs> now beat it. Uh, say, Mr. Baker, may I interject an interjection? What? <laughs> Alexander Graham Bell in 1942. What's that? <laughs> Two answers. You figure out the question. <laughs> Archie, what's this, a fugitive from We the People? (laughs) No, Phil, it's just nature's proof that two heads is not necessarily better than one. (laughs) We call it the Mad Russian. I see. Uh, Mad Russian, how do you do? How do you do? (laughs) Is that a dollar question, or are you just making conversation? (laughs) Well, let's call it the dollar question. I'll give it to you again. How do you do? Hmm. 
Can I have three guesses? All right. I give up. Russian, then why did you want three guesses? I don't give up so easy. You have to excuse him. You see, when he was born, the, uh, the doctor was nearsighted, and the Russian got slapped on the head. <laughs> Mr. Baker, speaking of questions, I have one for you. What is it? Name a city. <laughs> Name a city, huh? Hmm. Could you give me a hint? <laughs> Try San Francisco. <laughs> okay, San Francisco. You're wrong. <laughs> Absolutely wrong. It's Schenectady. <laughs> yes. Yes. S-C-H-E-N-E-C-T-A-D-Y. Russian, that's amazing. You just spelled Schenectady. I did? Yes. Yeah. I thought I spelled San Francisco. <laughs> Congratulations, Russian. You have just won the jerk pot. <laughs> now, Archie, how about letting me play my accordion? Your accordion... Bill, do you have to play that stomach stein way? <clears throat> it drowns everything out. A guy can't even think. Young man, I'm still going over the books, and there are certain shortages I'd like to have explained. Mm, shortages. <clears throat> Phil, uh, how would you like to thrill us with some nice accordion music? <laughs> and make it good and loud. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, uh, quick, play some more. Just, just a minute, young man. Stop that stalling. Your books are short. Fifty-seven dollars. Hmm. Fifty-seven dollars, huh? Archie, is there any way I can help you get the books to balance? Mr. Baker, you couldn't get those books to balance if you held your accordion in one hand and a parasol in the other. Fifty-seven bucks short. That stuff will send me to jail. Oh, we can't have that, Arch. Say, I've got an idea. Why don't we put on my $64 question show right here in the tavern tonight? If you win, you can cover the shortage. I'm in. Well, all you have to do is use your brains. Get out! Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah? Give me that cyclopedia. Let me see now. Abelard, Aberdeen, Abyssinia... Here are two guys who don't need an encyclopedia to give you the right answer for what every smoker wants. Now here's Chesterfield's answer to Cyrano de Bergerac, Bob Hope. <laughs> 
I'd top you easy, Dad, but we only have a minute here to sell Chesterfield. Okay, well, let's get to it. Better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. Mm, the mildness is a cinch to prove. You just make Chesterfield mildness test. You know, open a pack and enjoy that milder aroma. Then smoke them, and you'll know that Chesterfields are mild. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. So make our cigarette your cigarette. The reasons go together like this. Buy Chesterfield, Chesterfield, the one that proves its case. Yes, Chesterfields are milder, milder, plus no aftertaste. Oh, ho, open the pack and give them a sniff. Then you'll smoke them. Well, Phil, I'm all set. Russian, announce the quiz show. <laughs> Presenting, Mr. Taking It or Leaving It, <laughs> Bill Baker. I thank you, thank and you. And featuring your friend, not mine, Mr. Taking It and Lossing It Up, Archie. <laughs> you. All right, Archie, you're our first contestant. Let's get started. Are you ready? Go ahead, me brain is frothing at the leash. <laughs> Very well, select the category. I like the category. Right away, he starts with a trick question. <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, choose a subject. Oh, that. Uh, well, what subject have you got? Well, let's see what we have on the board. Now, there's ancient Aztec ceramics, early Buddhist poetry, medieval Slavic etymology. Uh-huh. How about famous saloons on Third Avenue? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, we don't have that. Now, how about calculus or ancient Roman history? Ancient Roman history? That uh, sounds pretty good. You'll be sorry! <laughs> Maybe, huh? Phil, so, uh, ain't you got something a little more cultural? Cultural? Yeah, easy. <clears throat> the only subjects left are baseball and etiquette. That's right up my alley. <laughs> baseball? No etiquette. <laughs> Very well. The subject is etiquette. Now, for one dollar, what is etiquette? Well, uh, etiquette is... Uh... That's correct. You have one dollar. Now, uh... Hey, I'm hot tonight, huh? <laughs> How would you like to try for two dollars? You think I'm going to quit when I'm in the middle of a winning streak? <laughs> well, all right, for two dollars. What is a finger bowl? Oh, a finger bowl. It's etiquette, huh? Mm. Yeah, that's, uh... That's the thing you wash your fingers in. That is absolutely correct. Yeah. In case your fingers is full of mashed potatoes. Oh. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Talk your way back to zero? <laughs> now, for four dollars, who wrote the book of etiquette? Who wrote the book of etiquette? Um, uh, Phil, uh, could you give me a hint? Okay. The last name is Post. Uh-huh. Could you hint me the first name? <laughs> No, but I'll tell you this. The initial is E. Mm. I got it. Yes? Edgar Allan Post. <laughs> Good. Edgar Allan Post pays you $4 for originality. <laughs> now for $8, what implement is used at the dining table for picking up lumps of sugar? Implement. Picks up sugar. <laughs> Sugar. Tongues for the memory. I got it. Yeah. Bob Hope. <laughs> what? Bob Hope picks up lumps of sugar. It ain't hay, brother. <laughs> it ain't right either. I'll give you one more chance. Let me see. An implement to pick up sugar. Hmm. Coaching from the audience, please. <laughs> Miss Duffy, please. Get back to work and stop waving them sugar tongs. That's the answer. What? What you just said. Get back to work? No. <laughs> stop waving? No. The sugar tongs? Yes. Amazing how some people have trouble with these quizzes. <laughs> Phil, hit me with a $16 question. All right, Archie. Tell me, what is the largest city in Italy? Largest city in... Wait a minute. What's that question got to do with adequate? Well, what have your answers got to do with the question? <laughs> Go ahead. What is the largest city in Italy? I see. The largest city in Italy. Italy, huh? Oh, give me a home. 
Where the buffalo roam? I got it. What is it? Buffalo. Oh. <laughs> no, no. Think, Archie. Where do you have to be to do as the Romans do? Romania? <laughs> well, we'll give you credit for a near miss. <laughs> now, shall we both try for the $32 question? Okay, Bill, we're both trifers, but uh, leave us get back to my favorite subject of adequate. All right. Does one eat peas with a knife or a fork? That's so obvious. One uses a fork. That's right. Just use the knife to mash him with. <laughs> How dainty. Well, you have 32. Would you, uh, would you take it? Let me see. Or leave I, it, huh? I owe the books 57. Uh... Then why don't you try uh, the $64 question? You'll be sorry if you do. You'll be in jail if you don't. <laughs> okay, Phil, hit me again. Very well. The $64 question. This question concerns table manners. Oh, that's up the alley. <laughs> now, the King of England comes to your house for dinner. Naturally. <laughs> Where does he eat? He eats in the dining room, of course. You think I'd put the King of England in the kitchen? No, oh, no. I mean, does he sit to your right or your left? Well, if it's the King of England, he sits to me right. That's correct. Absolutely correct. Archie, how did you know? Well, I wouldn't want him sitting around the side of the table where he can look into the bathroom. <laughs> Archie, you're brilliant. You win $64. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, Mr. Waterprice, uh, here's the dough now, so the books won't be short. And to show you the kind of a guy you're dealing with, you can keep the change. Just a moment, young man. I owe you an apology. Huh? I've made a mistake in my figures. The books are not short at all. They ain't short. You mean I worked me brain to the bone for nothing? <laughs> well, Archie, you've got $64. Now you can take out your girlfriend, Peaches Latour. What? Me going out with a strip tease? Me, an intellectual... <laughs> When we ask you to try Anison for the relief of pain due to a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, we're not asking you to try a new or unproved method. For there are many people listening in now who have been introduced to Anison tablets by their own dentist or physician. You who have received Anison this way know the effective, incredibly fast relief these tablets bring. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. People by the thousands are using modern anison today instead of other ways. Doesn't their experience seem worth following? Try anison the next time you suffer pains from headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You'll be delighted with the results. Ask your druggist for anison today. Anison is spelled A-N-A-C-I-N. Listen again next week, friends, to Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night transcribed feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you what every smoker wants, mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste, and by Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. Listen tomorrow evening for The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, the Saturday night feature of the All-Star Festival.